Welcome to SWK's video series on Sage 100. This video is going to provide some tips and tricks when applying cash receipts. Before we go to the cash receipts entry panels, I want to show you something in the accounts receivable options that might be useful. First, we can assign a default bank code for cash receipts. I have multiple bank accounts, and so I have chosen bank code D. Another is to require a deposit amount before the user begins applying checks. I happen to like this option, so I'm going to keep this checked. Let's accept and go to cash receipts entry. I'm going to create a new account. You can see here that my bank code D has been chosen and I am going to select my deposit date. My deposit amount is $1,056.04. This field would not be available had that checkbox not been enabled. Let's go to accept and the first check is from my customer ABF, American Business Futures. Enter the check number and the amount received. At this point, I could click on the Auto button and it would apply this check to the oldest invoices until it, ran, it used up the entire amount of the check. That last invoice might be a partial payment. In my case, I want to pick and choose. So what I could do is I could come to the little icon here and choose first, first one invoice, accept, and then come back and accept another. Or I can use this handy little icon that allows me to select multiple invoices. I'm going to hold my control key down and select the two invoices that are being paid. Now that brought me to the $910 I needed, but let me show you something else. If I would have held the shift key down, it would have selected the range. You could see here that I have some other icons where I could select all the invoices. I could deselect them. I could also modify the sort columns. And what I'm going to do now is come back to my control key, select my two invoices, and apply it, and you can see both invoices have been selected. We're done with this check, and my next check is $90 from a company that is not my customer. I've received a rebate. So what I'm going to do, and under customer number, I'm going to type in cash. Now it opens up the name, and I can put whatever I need to. Let's say it's um, Home Depot and it's a rebate. Enter in my check number, my $90, and when I come to lines, you'll see that my line type has been automatically changed from invoice to GL account. Let's go ahead and put in an account number. I'm going to select from my list here. I'm going to put it to miscellaneous expense, and it's going to apply a negative $90 to my expense account. So it's actually going to be a credit balance because this is a cash receipt. Clicking on accept. Now I have one more check to apply. But my check stub that I've received and the check itself has a name I don't recognize, but it has an invoice number. If I type in the invoice number, Sage is going to find that customer that belongs to this invoice number. In this case, it's going to be Avnet. Let's go ahead and put the check number in, and you can see that it has entered the check amount for me. And that is based on the invoice amount. Now, if I needed to, I could change the amount received to something else if there were more than one invoices be being paid. I'm going to come to my lines tab. It has automatically entered the invoice number and the amount. And of course, I can change these, add additional invoices if I need to. Clicking on accept, that completes my deposit. I'm going to come to my printer icon and click on my print button. If this is going to bring up 
paperless office for journals and registers. So rather than this going to a physical printer, it is bringing it to a PDF, the PDF converter, and it's going to save this on my server. I'll exit out, tell it I want to update the cash receipt journal, and you can see that it is automatically processing the daily transaction register that is based on a different setup option. Hope you have found this video helpful and helps you get more out of Sage 100. Thanks for watching.